While many places in the world have built modern rail systems, the American Midwest is still struggling with limited public transport infrastructure. Michigan, a state with a long history of rail, is facing a great opportunity as the North-South Passenger Rail Research Project is entering its final stages, promising to bring unprecedented changes. Could this be the next major step in the development of public transport in the Midwest, or is it just an idea on paper? Join on the trains to explore the potential and challenges this project brings to the future of transportation in the Midwest. Project Overview The North-South Passenger Rail project in Michigan is currently being thoroughly studied and has entered its final phase. WSP Consulting, a prestigious unit in the field of engineering and global professional services, is leading the assessment and planning process for this project. The primary goal was to improve transportation connections between cities and communities across the state, while also expanding efficient, environmentally friendly public transportation. In their report to the Alma City Commission, the team focused on several key factors. They reviewed existing routes, planned service, and estimated initial and long-term operating costs. These analyses helped determine how the service would operate, how often it would run, and what stops would be appropriate. Through a study of travel and demographic data, potential stations were identified in key locations in central Michigan such as Clare, Mount Pleasant, Alma, Owasso, and Durand. This shows that the project is not only focused on large cities but also interested in connecting smaller communities, helping to create a more comprehensive and convenient transportation network. In addition, Michigan authorities also forecast that the population will increase by about 670,000 people between 2015 and 2045, according to the Michigan 2045 Mobility Plan. This is an important factor driving the need for modern and sustainable public transportation, making the North-South Rail Project a suitable and urgent solution. Project Research to ensure that the North-South Michigan Rail Project is highly effective, the research team carefully reviewed successful passenger rail models in many other areas of the country. Learning from these projects is an important step to avoid mistakes and promote proven strengths. Among them, the Northern Lights Express connecting Minneapolis with Duluth, Minnesota, is of particular interest. This 241-kilometer-long route stands out for its operational readiness, meaning that it has been thoroughly prepared in terms of infrastructure and has been closely coordinated with other means of transport, such as local buses to facilitate passenger transfers. When put into operation, the line is expected to shorten the Minneapolis-Duluth travel time to about 2.5 hours, effectively connecting with intermediate stations and the public transport system, thereby not only increasing the number of passengers using the service but also reducing road traffic and promoting economic and tourism development for the entire region. The Amtrak Downeaster, which runs from Boston to Maine, is also a prime example of how the route has successfully promoted tourism and downtown development along its route. The 140-mile line, which has been in operation since 2001, currently operates five round trips daily and has repeatedly set passenger volume records demonstrating strong demand for travel between Maine and the Boston area. In addition, the Illinois Zephyr and Carl Sandburg trains, which connect Chicago to Quincy, Illinois, demonstrate the important value of linking rural communities with large urban centers. Operating over a distance of approximately 415 kilometers with two daily round trips, these services have long provided vital transportation options for smaller towns and rural areas along the route such as Galesburg, Macomb, and Princeton. By maintaining effective and reliable transport links, they help residents in these communities access employment, education, health care, and other essential services in Chicago, thereby improving quality of life and supporting local economies. Despite some past service interruptions, recent efforts have restored full operations, resulting in a significant increase in ridership. This success underscores the role of the Illinois Zephyr and Carl Sandburg trains not only as transportation services but also as catalysts for sustainable economic and social development in rural Illinois. Lessons learned from these rail lines help the Michigan team understand that for the project to be successful, it is necessary to build an integrated transport network that serves a diverse range of passengers and promotes local economic development. At the same time, flexible connections with other transport modes are key to enhancing the experience and increasing the number of people using the service. Benefits and Challenges If implemented, the Michigan North-South Rail Line could bring significant value to the state. 
Economically, improved rail access would help small towns like Clare, Mount, Pleasant, and Alma attract businesses, visitors, and workers, strengthening local downtowns and stimulating regional development. The line would also expand mobility for students and workers, especially those without cars, by connecting universities, job centers, and industrial areas more efficiently. Beyond economics, the rail service would enhance social connectivity by giving rural communities better access to health care, education, and cultural services, while reducing road traffic and improving air quality. However, several major challenges remain. Upgrading the existing track and infrastructure requires substantial investment both initially and for long-term maintenance. Financing is another obstacle, as the state must still evaluate economic models, operating costs, and funding sources to ensure sustainability. Demand analysis also plays a critical role. Understanding travel patterns and accurately predicting ridership is essential to avoid underused stations or inefficient service. Finally, gaining strong community support will be crucial, with public meetings in 2026 expected to shape the final plan and determine whether the project aligns with real local needs. Future Vision in the coming months, the team will continue to finalize the remaining components, especially detailed economic analyses and financial models to assess long-term operational viability. This is an important step in determining whether the rail line has the potential to receive official investment and support. Alongside these technical efforts, the study team has outlined a preliminary project timeline to guide the decision-making process. By late 2025, the study is expected to produce a refined set of route options and service scenarios. Early 2026 will focus on public outreach and community meetings to incorporate local feedback into the final evaluation. A consolidated recommendation is planned for mid-2026, after which the state will review whether to move the project into formal planning and environmental clearance phases. If approved, preliminary engineering and funding applications could begin as soon as 2027. Additionally, if the project is deemed viable, Michigan will need to work with federal transportation agencies and other stakeholders to secure funding, develop a construction roadmap, and implement each phase. Combining a long-term vision with concrete steps will help the project move from research to reality. The Michigan North-South Rail Line is not yet a start-button project, but what is happening shows that it is no longer a vague idea. The data being analyzed, the models being tested, and the public coming forward all add up to a sense that Michigan is at a critical crossroads for its transportation future. If things continue to go in the right direction, this could be the moment when the Midwest rail system turns a new leaf, one that's more modern, more connected, and more practical. Of course, there are still many unanswered questions, where the money will come from, whether the public will actually support it, and whether the project can compete with the more familiar modes of transportation. But it's these questions that make the future of rail all the more interesting to watch. It's not just a Michigan story, but a microcosm of the Midwest's struggle between innovation and old habits. And perhaps that's what makes this topic so fascinating. We're witnessing a state slowly, deliberately, but with determination, trying to rewrite the way it moves. Whether Michigan will be the next big rail expansion for the Midwest remains to be seen. Public Reaction some are eager to see real change, but many are skeptical about the project's viability or whether it will fit into current habits. One comment read, Go to Japan for a while, travel around their country by train, and then come back to Michigan. It's stupid how dependent we are on cars for any little bit of travel. I would fully support investment in more rail infrastructure. In this way, many hope that efficient rail will make traveling between cities, rural areas, and urban areas more convenient, saving time, reducing driving stress, and reducing dependence on personal cars. One person wrote, As excited as I am about this project, there are a lot of hoops to jump through before scheduling and final costing is completed. I'm glad we have the ball rolling now. However, there are still doubts and concerns. Some people ask the practical question, Why should I drive 45 minutes to the train station just to go the same distance or longer by car? meaning that if the total time and cost are not cheaper, rail does not seem to be more beneficial to them. Or someone is skeptical about the sustainability and the possibility of the project being completed. I've heard this for 40 years, expresses doubt that the project could sink into delays, waiting for permits, budgets, and then being forgotten. The Michigan North-South Rail Project has clearly stirred up a lot of mixed opinions in the community, from optimistic expectations to cautious skepticism about its feasibility and effectiveness. 
Will this project become a major boost to public transportation in the Midwest, or will it remain an unrealized idea? Only time will tell, but it is clear that the interest and voice of the community is the driving force to keep the project on track and meet the real needs of the people. That's all for today. See you next video.